Hello, everyone, and welcome to Burn the Ship, the podcast that helps entrepreneurs go all in on their business, and we introduce them to professionals that can help them to do so. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Timothy Shore. How are you doing today, Timothy? Doing good, doing good, baby. Good, good. Hey, we definitely appreciate you jumping on the show. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, your business, and then tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, so uh, my name is Tim Shore. I uh, own the business Buried Acorn Brewing Company here in Syracuse. Uh, we distribute in three states. We uh, have a small tap room here in Syracuse. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the obstacles we faced, but we at one point had three locations. Now we're back down to the original one. Um, and uh, it's a real fun, uh, interesting uh, journey to see where we are, uh, how we've gotten here, and, and where we're heading uh, out of this whole thing. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so, beginning, have you always been in the uh, food and beverage industry, or is this new to you? Tell us a little bit how you got to where you are now. Yeah, so to some extent, uh, my wife and myself uh, have always been in food and beverage. Uh, my wife, my business partner, she runs the food component of our, our business, and then he also runs the back end of things, books and stuff like that, because um, I'm not good with numbers and all that. Um, but so uh, but going back to like kind of the origin story, the whole thing. Um, yeah, I mean, out of out of my dropping out of college, uh, I traveled as a musician for uh, about a decade um, and then ended up landing in a couple of hospitality gigs just because a lot of those spots are temp help, you know, so you're able to sort of pop in and work when they're busy and then we go travel on tour and stuff. And it was kind of just a job I always have when I come back. Um, mm -hmm. So I ended up working in a lot of bars and restaurants on and off. Uh, my, uh, my cousin, uh, my cousin, Mike gave me a homebrew that he made when he was in college and it was beer. It was in interesting. Um, and then a decade later, I, I got a homebrew kit uh, from uh, my, my mom for one of my birthdays or Christmas or something. Um, and I, I, I did it, and uh, I went down the rabbit hole, man. And next thing you know, my basement's full with 20 carboys. It's full of all different <laughs> beers that I'll never be able to drink, uh, mm -hmm. both because half of them were terrible, and the other half is just too much beer, right? Um, right. And so I, I, I ended up working at a brewery in Chicago. Uh, at the time, it was called Atlas. Now it's called Burnt City at District Brew Yards right in the city of Chicago. Uh, did that for a little bit, and, uh, and then decided to venture back east to where I grew up in Syracuse, New York. And uh, bring my wife with me, along with our two new bouncing baby kids, to open up nice. this monstrosity. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and out of the gate, man, 20, 2018, it was just like the growth was insane. Just through the roof, couldn't fund the growth. It was just like spinning our wheels. Just the trajectory was straight up. Craft beer was already to the point like where it was probably at its peak, I would think, or getting to the peak of, um, you know, popularity at least. Um, and uh, man, we hit it. We hit it right on the head, and we did really, really well. Uh, you could fast forward uh, the last four years; I could blink, and it went by. Man, it was uh, as I'm sure some of your hospitality uh, guests have said in the past. It's absolutely it's been a challenge the last three and a half or so <laughs> years, to say yes. the least. Uh, and uh, most of it, 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 even you know, at our state has been, been gone through it. Uh, it still uh, appears to be sort of unsurmountable. Like I do not know that we're going to overcome COVID. Uh, okay. We're still at that point where, you know, younger than 10 years, so we've been in business for, or I didn't say this, but we've been in business for almost seven years now. Um, so we're just kind of like getting to the point where things are going to get good. But the last few years have been such a roller coaster ride, both for, uh, you know, general society and, and COVID and all the shutdowns and whatnot, because New York was uh, pretty strict on that. Um, yes. and, and, then, and then you kind of fast forward the economic challenges of the past couple of years, man, uh, it's been a challenge. Also, uh, you know, uh, people aren't buying eight dollar coffees at Starbucks anymore. That's why they're struggling. Well, mm -hmm. our twenty five, thirty dollar bottle of beer might also be getting cut. You know, that high we see that high end category has kind of gotten chopped all the way down mm -hmm. to even our IPAs at grocery store level have been down the past uh, the okay. past year for the first time ever. Um, okay. So the craft beer community of, of, of businesses have gotten together and like, what can we do to kind of get the interest back in and get some more velocity into craft beer. And that's kind of where we are right now. Um, our grocery store shelves are down quite significantly mm -hmm. for the first time ever. Last year they were up, but this year they're down for the first time. Um, our bar restaurant sales are up. 
Um, and our own premise, our bar that we have uh, where we sell our own food and our own drinks um, to customers that walk in, our own tap room, um, that's up um, quite significantly as well. But uh, grocery store shelves, which is the majority of my business, have uh, taken quite a hit this year. So uh, we've got a couple of plans for the future and what we're going to do to kind of um, – whether it's springboard springboard off of what we got going on now, uh, we have another a new business coming in, uh, and uh, that's going to be uh, a cannabis business. Uh, we okay. do see a lot of young kids going to cannabis instead of craft uh, mm-hmm. with their buzz money, what you call it that. And so we're kind of we're leaning into that a little bit, and mm-hmm. uh, we'll be launching that here in the next couple of weeks, actually. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I uh, definitely appreciate you sharing about your journey. I want to dive more into the Buried Acorn, though, because, you know, the purpose of these shows are to highlight your business and talk about those things and the reason why they should come to you. Now, I know that that marketing dollar for the craft may seem to be shrinking, but if someone's going to spend it, why should they come into to your establishment or purchase well, yours from the grocery store? Yeah. So, um, I mean... Our, one of the things that we do here at our specifically at our tap room is that um, we have uh, I, could probably, I could probably hold this up you can see uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, beers a whole bunch of really small batch of oak age beers um, it's where the name uh, my wife came up with the name for the business it's where the name buried acorn came from is that we um, focus um, primarily our passion is uh, oak age beer. Um, so, um, we have, uh, you know, a whole bunch of oak, age, oak, oak barrels. Uh, I think I got about 60 oak barrels, uh, 53 gallon oak barrels. And then I've got two, uh, 1700 gallon upright, uh, large oak barrels that we do a whole bunch of really unique blends of, um, you know, different, different barrels, whether it's a sour beer or a bourbon barrel aged beer that we age on coconut. So the offerings that we, um, have here for the really beer centric person, um, are, are really, um, really what they're looking for. It's sort of a niche within the niche, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can go to the brew pub down the road that looks like an Ikea barfed it up, or you can come to me and, uh, we've got all funky stuff on the walls. We serve everything. Oh, sorry. I'm a popular guy. No, that's no worries. No worries. <laughs> um, but so like, yeah. So, and then um, we brought also on the kitchen side of things, my wife has brought in um, kind of a fun sandwich, um, Chicago style Italian beef sandwich, uh, which mm-hmm. is uh, braised sirloin uh, dipped in au jus uh, on a French roll covered in uh, pickled vegetables. Okay. And uh, it's wildly popular here now. And we get people, which is really fun as we drive traffic with food. Cause before she came out of the company three years ago, we didn't have food. So the food's new within the past two years, and uh, man, we'd be out of business without it. We, we we wouldn't have anybody, man. Everybody's coming for the sandwich, and like the the dynamic has shifted from being a place that only sold beer to a place that sells everything from food to cocktails to THC infused beverages to uh, beer, liquor, uh, everything. So we kind of become the full service type of spot. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of by market demand. Yeah, make makes sense uh, as far as the uniqueness of what makes them come in. Now I'm looking at your rolling board over there. Do you have events there as well? Um, do you have groups that come on a normal basis? Or are you looking for additional groups to come and visit? So yeah, one of the things that we've also we've done from the start really has been um, to have like this place be a sort of community center. We also so referred to the business as a center for the underground arts. Um, it's sort of like we do a lot of events that one aren't sanctioned by the city and are probably illegal. We do them in the brew house. We do them warehouse style. We have art shows next to the tanks, next to the oak mm-hmm. barrels. And mm-hmm. we do like uh, all kinds of like fun uh, underground EDM type shows that like we could get shut down in a second for, but like we pull it off and we have a lot of fun with it. And um so when, from the start, we've always been very event centric. Okay. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now we've noticed um, not only was food critical and full bar critical and really service critical um, to us continuing in this, uh, in, in what we do, but we also found that the events have become even more critical to the point like where right now we've uh, gone through and we're planning every single event for every single day that we have an event next year. Um, mm-hmm. On Tuesdays, we do trivia here. Um, 
Sometimes on Fridays we have live music. Sometimes Saturdays in the afternoon we have live music. We do a monthly comedy series. Um, every first Friday of the month we do comedy. Um, we're all, we are always looking for different, like, cool, unique events. We do everything from craft night to book club. Um, you know, just kind of always have something like you would have if you walked into your neighborhood, like uh, Korean Center, uh, which mm-hmm. we have here in Syracuse, which we were at the other day. And they do everything from language class to, you know, to cooking class and those kinds of things. We've done eggnog, scratch eggnog making class. We've done all of those kind of like community center type events. So that's kind of like what this sort of organically developed into. But without but up front, we also sort of had that intent. And honestly, dude, if we don't have a big event. We mm-hmm. don't have enough traffic coming through to make that right. day even do well. You know, I mean, it breaks even, what have you. But we really, the events, the food, the full bar, and the full-on promotion for all that stuff is really where um, I think a lot of brew pub type uh, places really have to head in order to uh, really capture people. Um, new yes, traffic. yes. It's, it's very obvious over your seven years in business, you've had some successful runs. You have some not as successful runs. But I know for sure over that time you have acquired and nurtured some skills to help you to continue to go forward, though. Do you mind sharing with the audience some of those skills that you have acquired that they can use in their mix and help their business continue to go? So um, there's there's a couple things that we, we really kind of have as a little bit of an ethos here. Um, we're we're always trying uh, one of our little ethos sayings is um, to uh, uh, well, traditionally different is what we have on every one of our cans, meaning that like, yeah, we make these traditional styles, but we have a new spin on it, a new way of going about it. And, and I think um, that was an intent with with the creation of our beverage beer. Um, but I think also moving um, throughout the life of this business, we've, we've seen that really just in business, you have to adapt so quickly. Um, one, because the world moves way faster than an individual now. It's like the internet happens on your phone before you wake up in the morning, you're, you're already at work, right? And so um, as you develop in, into all this stuff, we sort of always kind of have to reinvent ourselves to grab people's attention because attention is really where, uh, where we make our sale, right? Um, so with this new company that we're, we're coming up with, which is under the same company technically, but it's a, an entirely new, as far as the customer facing portion of it, it's entirely new. It's not buried acorn, but the cannabis company is going to be, um, it's called offshore. And it's, uh, our, my last name is shore. That's kind of how we come up with um, the idea for it. And we've, um, you know, we're like, okay, well, okay. So craft beer, it's not going to grow right now. It may not grow for a couple of years. Whereas previously we're doing, 300%, 100%, 150%, 40%, 2% growth every year. Um, now it's down. Um, I think we're going to stay flat for the year by the, by the time the year's out. But, you know, growth isn't there in craft right now. Whether it's the mm-hmm. customer's attention is on cannabis, whether the customer's attention is on a more healthy lifestyle, that they don't want to consume high-calorie craft. Um, either way, alcohol consumption on the craft side and the high-end craft beer, it's down. So let's yeah. go ahead and be nimble make a move um, it's hard to always be reinventing yourself and having that inspiration to um, push forward into something new or reinvent what you're doing um, and I think that is like probably the biggest skill that I was able to adapt from just my previous uh, you know life as a physician and the creative lifestyle um, to get creative in business because it's just everything is new all the time people want new, and the, the ways we reach people are new. There's a new social platform every minute. I don't know. Every six months, there's a new Skywire or there's a Blue Sky, whatever they are. All new ones all the time. I'm trying out. You always got to push into that new thing to sort of um, generate new customers. If you don't generate new customers, eventually the old ones, um, they stop coming. So yes, yes. That, that's where I'm at. Just like being as nimble and willing to adapt and move with the market that shifts so quickly. Yes, yes. Don't stay stagnant in your ways. If you see trends are going there or if you see things that are going bad, don't just keep running your head into the wall. You know, you got to figure out how to, uh, like you said, adjust and, and be nimble and go forward from there. So I definitely appreciate you sharing that skill. Now, Tim, we've talked a lot about the business aspect of things. And on this podcast, we want the entrepreneurs that are watching it to understand we do all of this hard work 
so we can actually live some of our life. Now, I want to ask you a few things about Tim, not necessarily about the acorn. Now, you said it multiple times, you're a musician. What did you play? Uh, I was a cellist. Play? I was a cellist in college. I studied music composition, and then I uh, I okay. traveled as a musician. I played most of the guitar on the road, just in rock bands, prog progressive rock stuff. But uh, okay. okay, all underground, underground stuff. You know, dive heel clubs all around Midwest, okay. Southwest, California, everywhere. Okay, that's a good deal. Now, um, this may be a leading question since you told me about your musician uh, career. Now, let's just say you have sold all of those special Chicago sandwiches and you have just flooded the market with, I think I like the Michael Jackson up there. There you uh, go. You sold all of those. Uh, what would Tim do with his time if he didn't have to focus on the bar? Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, my wife and I uh, are super close to this business. We're in it every day from morning to night. In between coaching baseball, she coaches cheer. We got soccer. We got all this stuff, you know, like life stuff that happens. Our kids are nine and, or, yeah, nine and 11. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're in it with the kids as far as activity goes, you know. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we talk about an exit a lot, you know, and whether that's an exit fully or an exit where I can at least still steer the brand. Um, but um, we put so much of ourselves into this thing um, that it can become unfair to your family and your relationships mm -hmm. with the people around you, your friends. And because uh, it's really the only way to do it. Like you're not going to yeah. you're not going to get away with starting a new, you know, bootstrap type business and and crush it for five years. And then you're going to be, uh, you know, retired or something. You know, you're looking right. at 10 plus, but we're looking to have ourselves removed in some way from it because it's just um, it's too much to sustain uh, for both my family lifestyle and our, our just personal like well-being you know like somebody <laughs> people don't realize that like small business and especially in the past few years although i've known not too much more than the volatility of the past few years in optionality um mm -hmm. i mean from a business ownership standpoint i should say but uh it, it, you know it, it's been uh, quite the ride and it's, it it's it's really 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 stressful and yeah. so people moving forward in business they have to realize that they they need their their head time for themselves to take a break from it, put the hammer down, come back tomorrow and clock back in. Because yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. and I say this because I have a very hard time following it. It's very very hard to do, <laughs> and uh, it's it, it's very important to the success of your business. I I would say that. Excellent, excellent. Now, how can the people get in contact with you? How can they find you? Tell us all the ways as best as you can of how someone can find you. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, and to fully answer that last question, my wife and I are going to the ocean as soon as my daughter's out of high school, and th and that's okay. the and we're just gonna live there. That's that's in that's the, ocean? the plan is to the ocean, the ocean somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere we're gonna find a spot on the ocean and retire there. Uh, but we're I looking at about another ten years before we're okay. before we're able to okay. do that. Okay, nothing um, wrong with. Blue or green water. Nothing yeah, right. Um, but uh, as far as where you can find Buried Acorn, so we're in Syracuse, New York. Uh, we're right in front of uh, one of the largest malls in America. Uh, it's called Destiny USA. We're on Hiawatha Boulevard and Van Rensselaer Street. Um, if you want to check us out online, um, you can uh, check out our website, buriedacorn.com. Um, and we're also on socials as Buried Acorn Brewing Company, um, both on the uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we're on a couple others, but... I don't really do anything on those platforms too much. Um, you know, we, we don't have a social manager. We, we do it all ourselves. And, and you can tell when you look at it. It doesn't look pro, but um, it's honest. It's what we are inside. So, so we are online. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing that portion of it. It's been a true pleasure having you on today because it's important for business owners to hear the ups and the downs from other entrepreneurs that are in this community. And they can see that if you can make it happen, do the most important thing, not quit, you can keep going and you can add things to your bag to help you along that path. And we truly appreciate you sharing that with us today. And we always honor our guests by giving them the last word. So please take a second, look into the camera and tell the audience something good. For sure, man. I, I know everybody out there struggling. Just keep your head, keep your head healthy and stay hard. Keep it, keep it going. You got it.
Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing today, Timothy. We truly do appreciate it. We wish you nothing but success on not just the buried acorn, but for offshore that's coming in the thank future. You. So uh, thank you so much for sharing, and we truly do appreciate it. Word, thank you. It's great to meet you. Take care. Yes, yes. And to the audience, be kind and thanks.